Right guys, hello another video for you all. We're going to talk about Corsair's IQ software, Lighting Link and Philips Hue coloured bulbs, getting them all to work together. The IQ software reasonably recently was updated. We've gone from version 3 now into version 4. The graphical user interface has changed quite a bit. They've also snuck in this extra option for Philips Hue bulbs, which is kind of cool. Maybe you weren't aware of it. Now you are. We'll break the video down with timestamps as I love to do to help you find what you want to see. We'll show you how to get it set up. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I personally choose to do. Although it's quite a cool option to have IQ control my Philips Hue lights, I don't really want it to. So I'll show you what I do. What you should probably start off with is what Lighting Link actually is in IQ. When we have Corsair RGB peripherals, whether it's a keyboard, whether it's a mouse, you might have RGB fans from Corsair, you might have their RGB memory, maybe you've got a water cooler, an AIO with lights on it, maybe you've got a mouse mat that's got an LED ring around a very outside edge. These can be married together to have the same color or do lighting effects and all sync together. It's actually pretty cool. So in order to do this, you're going to need uh, some software and obviously the peripherals. Obviously, you need the IQ software. I will give you a link in the description of the video and a pinned comment. We can see that I've got a Philips Hue bridge. We have this to set up our house. We can use the app to configure rooms, add lights, name these lights, put the lights into the rooms. It's a very important bit of kit. Make sure you've got that. We see I've also got a Harpoon RGB mouse from Corsair. That's synced up, that's an orange light. We've got the K55 RGB keyboard as well. So I should tell you now, it is not officially compatible with Lighting Link. I have done a video about a workaround, I did it a long time ago, it still works. In a nutshell, I'm gonna give you a link to the old version of IQ. Of course they're messed up, for whatever reason, the K55 works in Lighting Link with the old version. We force the K55, into the lighting link profile and then we just update iq which will bring us to version 4 the new graphical user interface if your rgb memory or your fans or whatever devices aren't seen on the old version doesn't matter once you've updated they will then become compatible and everything will be synced together don't panic if you've got a more expensive keyboard you'll be fine if it's officially compatible with lighting link but the reason i did this is that i bought an, a refurbished mouse so that only cost me 10 pound and the refurbished K55 cost me £30, so £40 all in, when the keyboard itself, brand new, retail, should have been £50. I think I did quite well. To the right-hand side of the screen at the top, you can see uh, the webcam capture, so you can see what the keyboard's doing, you can see what the mouse is doing, if I bring it into picture, you can see my Philips play bar. We've got some inner bulbs, we'll talk about those in a minute, and then below we've got the capture of my Android phone and the Philips Hue app and what's going on with that. So let's talk about these inner bulbs. I've got them in the ceiling right now. Uh, they are significantly cheaper than the Philips Hue bulbs. Uh, so that's good. However, they don't work with the Philips entertainment area feature we can set up. And by extension, they also won't be controlled by IQ. A little bit of a shame. I'm not too worried though. Um, I can still control them and, and do stuff in my room. I'm quite happy. So let's just explain what's going on. As I'll grab my phone, you can see what's going on on the screen. So this is, if we go to the home screen, so I can see I've got all of my rooms set up. I'm in the guest room. Give it a tap. So there's a couple of lights on. They are those inner bulbs in the ceiling. And then these are off. These are the play bar. So what will happen if I tap a coloured scene, my ceiling lights are going to go red, which they've done. The play bar has also tried to go red, but IQ has taken it over and made it go orange. I can do a different scene. So Tokyo, as I look up, it's kind of pink purple on one bulb and the other one's gone blue. The play bar tried to do that as well, take a colour from the scene, but IQ has taken over and forced it to go orange to match with the lighting link. So it's Arctic Aurora, green and blue. You see a flash of green, it tried to do it, but IQ's doing the job of getting things to sync together. So if I had the Philips Hue bulbs in the ceiling and they were color, I would just be bathed in orange. IQ would have taken control of them. So just be aware, the inner bulbs aren't going to work with IQ. In essence, what we're doing is having Philips Hue bulbs be seen as Corsair 
peripherals. What we can't do is the reverse. I can't have my keyboard, mouse, memory, RGB fans take the colors that I'm selecting within Philips Hue, just so you're aware the limitations of the software. What we want to do now is explain to you guys how to get all of this set up. So you're obviously going to have IQ installed. You should have done that already. In the top right, we have the settings cog. So we'll give that a tap. And you can see we've got the Philips Hue. So tick that on. Now I've got plugins on as well. There's other cool things you can do with the IQ software. So if you've, I've got G1 to G6, the Stream Deck software to for me to start and stop recordings, do all kinds of cool stuff, I can program that in with these G1 to G6 buttons. All we're going to worry about in this video is Philips Hue. So we know that's on. And then your Philips Hue bridge should be seen by the software because it's on your network. And we can get this set up. So we'll click on our Philips Hue bridge and we'll do the setup wizard. Run the wizard. Ensure your Philips Hue bridge is on and configured for your network. Well, yeah, you should just have it wired in. The cable that came with it, RJ45 connector, goes into your router, your Wi Fi router. And uh, yeah, make sure the power's on, it's plugged in. And then we push the link button to get it synced in with IQ. Super simple, not difficult to do at all. You should be familiar with it because you've already set up your Philips light bulbs. Next thing we've got down is the lighting setup. So you can see uh, the basic setup I have in my house. I've got a single Philips white bulb in the ceiling of the living room, the lounge. I do have a Philips Ambilight TV in there. So that can chuck color against the wall from the TV, what's shown on the screen to the left, top or right, the color changes. It's quite cool. It's a small room. The Ambilight does well enough. I don't really feel like I need extra color bulbs in there. They are, as I've said, quite expensive. Got my hallway, it's quite long, couple of white Philips lights in there. Staircase, top of the landing, top of the stairs, white light. Uh, bathroom and toilet, they're missing bulbs at the minute, but we'll add some in. And then we've got the guest room that I'm in at the moment. So in the ceiling are those inner bulbs. And then we've got our Hue play bars in here as well. So we can drag things into different rooms if you want to. Okay, it's kind of cool that we've got that option, but you really should be doing that within the Philips Hue software. That's the whole point of it, to set up the rooms, add your lights, add your bulbs, name them so you know what's what. So if you're on the, uh, on the fence about doing Philips Hue, the reason I did it is my mum's quite old. She's not very well, so if she falls asleep in the lounge, she can use her phone. I've created a zone so she can turn on all the lights from the living room up to her bedroom. So through the hallway, up the, up the stairs, she can get into bed, then turn that zone off. All those lights will switch off without her having to touch a light switch. It is kind of cool. So we'll go down to the lighting effects tab. Now you'll notice it's just the guest room that has the lights going white, yellow, and red. All the other ones are grayed out. Now for you, when you first set it up, all of those will be lit up. It's trying to take control of everything around the house through IQ. Now you're not gonna to want to do that. If you've got colored lights in your kitchen or your lounge, someone's trying to watch TV, they don't want it to be like a, a rave or a disco with strobing effects because of what you've set up in IQ. So what we're gonna do is go into lighting link here under the lighting layers. Quick lighting zone, you will change it from all to whichever room you've got your PC in, whether you've called it the office, whatever you've done. Just give that a click. So we're only going to control one room through the Hue bridge. So we can see we've got our lighting link profiles there. We've got spiral rainbow. Now do keep in mind, I did say the K55 isn't officially compatible with lighting link. It only This is the basic one, so it only has three zones that light up. I think they've got like a pro version now, which has five areas of the keyboard that can be lit up. Uh, but some of these profiles, uh, it will let you change the direction, with like going up and down. Now this won't do per key lighting, so I can't get it to do that, move the lights up and down. Um, maybe that's why Corsair didn't make it compatible with lighting link, but I'm happy with what we can do through the workaround. So there's color shift, color pulse, visor, Move the speed up. We'll just let you see that the the mouse is synced as well. We've got the rain option. So there's type light in there. If you want to use this, as in when you tap a key for the light to come on, if you've got the K55 like me and you're doing the workaround, you must set that profile up on the old version of IQ. Never change it after that. 
have everything synced into type lighting. Never change it because once we've updated, it will not sync to it. I don't know why. It's just a caveat of the workaround. So make sure you do that on the old version. I'm not too bothered about it. Uh, what I use is temperature. So you can see we can do static colors and pick it from the wheel. You can have presets that are already there. It's really up to you. And we've got the device settings. So we can adjust the brightness of the bulbs, turn them right down, turn them right up. It's really up to you. So yeah, not too difficult to do. Now you know how. So what we'll do now, we'll talk through what I like to do. Uh, I'm going to set up the temperature profile. So I'm going to do my CPU. I want to know if that's getting too hot. We're coming out of the summer now, but it's still nice to know uh, what's going on. So I can do the first color, do the preset of white. I'm going to set that to about 10 degrees. The next light, the next color, I'm going to have this yellowy orange. I'm going to set that to about 20 degrees. And the red, about 75. Right, so idle temperatures should be about 30 degrees, 30 to 40. So that's going to give me an orange color. Uh, I've got a Thrustmaster Hotas joystick and throttle, black, but they've got orange highlights on them. And there is an orange light LED in the joystick when I move it. So I want the keyboard and mouse and the Hotas all to kind of tie in together. Orange, if things go red on the keyboard or the mouse, I need to look at the PC why it's getting so hot because it's going to start to throttle. Um, I'm going to lose performance because it's getting too hot. The machine will slow itself down to stop it cooking itself so that's the profile that i like to use but i don't really want iq to control my phillips bulbs what i'd rather do is use the phillips hue uh sync software so we'll give a link to that in the description as well so in order for this to work we're going to go back to our phillips hue app and we're going to settings and we've got entertainment areas i know it's hard to see on the screen it doesn't work portrait I have to do it. Uh, landscape I have to do it portrait but what we have to do is add in uh, an entertainment area so we'll do the plus it's giving me an option I can do uh, a sitting area around a TV or a gaming monitor or we can do a music listening spot well let's just do around a TV so I'm going to call this test I'll get my keyboard out of the way and do next now it's going to show me what bulbs I have in my house that are compatible with it. We've said those inner bulbs, they're not going to do the job, but the play bars will. So I'm just going to pick the guest room. And those bars are now blinking at me to let me know they've been selected. That's what I want. And we'll do next. I need to position the lights. Now I could, I get the adhesive in the pack and we get these brackets to stand the lights up, do what you want with them. I could stick them to the back of my monitor on the left and right hand side i'm not going to do that i want to have them work as like lamps as well with my ceiling lights i'm not always going to have it sync with a pc so i'll just you know, put them to the left side of the desk right side of the desk to help light up the wall or what's going on on the screen so their positions normally this would be over to the side so that's telling me this is the right one the left one's flashing right one's flashing so i know i need to move this to the right side this is the left one. That's how I name them. So I know what they are. That's off to the left side. That's blinking away at me in the corner. So that's, you can do the height, adjust the height of them. Left and right, select done. Our entertainment area is created. So you can go back in there if you've bought more bulbs down the line to add in more lights to the uh, area. Some people go really crazy with their cinema rooms. Um, yeah, I don't really want to throw too much money at it. So what, yeah, what we'll do, we'll delete that. I don't need the test profile. That was just to show you how to do it. I've already got my gaming desk profile set up. That's what you see QSync has set up. So we're going to settings, entertainment areas, and I've chosen gaming desk. So you might have another one, which is for your TV room, but we're doing the gaming desk general preferences there's all kinds of things you can tinker around with keyboard shortcuts you can have uh, this software 
load automatically when you turn the PC on and control the lights automatically. It's really up to you. So we see I've got my area selected, the gaming desk, that's the, the profile. We can do it by games, music, video or scenes. Subtle, moderate, high or extreme, how vibrant uh, the effect's going to be. And once I click start light sync, this is IQ is going to lose control and it's going to go to a white light. What I want to do now is head over to Kodi and we'll just play a film. It's, I've set it up so it's grabbing from the monitor. What's on the right hand side of the screen, it's going to a blue light, there's a flash of white. So it's not as good as a Philips Ambilight TV, I know because I own one, it's in the lounge. Uh, so it's kind of like a poor man's Ambilight, but it does work quite well. So it's the Pixar animation. Let's skip through. Obviously, it's Finding Nemo. There's going to be a lot of blue under the sea. Get some extra colors thrown in because of the coral reefs and whatever. So as we get Nemo, this light has started to go a little bit orange. There is a little bit of a delay between what's on the, the screen and what the lights do, but that's not it's not too bad because it's just lighting up the wall. I've got white walls. Yeah, it works. Works pretty well. Of course, I could play a game instead and have that stuff captured um, by the software and f have the lights chuck those colors out. It is actually pretty cool. So yeah, that's how I like to do it, guys. Uh, not saying that's the right way to do it. You're all free to do what you want to do have a little bit of fun with it so we'll leave it there guys have a great day have a great evening whatever you choose to do after watching this and as always i'll see you when i see you next ciao for now